The book we're talking about is this one. It's called Choosing Honor uh, by Mary Ficalora, and Mary is with us today. But Mary has brought along as a special guest as well on the program today, Virginia Crane. Virginia, welcome to you. You're the editor of this book. Yes, indeed. And Thank you're you. living in our uh, neighboring community of uh, Seal Beach, Leisure World. Mm -hmm. So welcome mm -hmm. you to the program today. Thank you. A little bit of background, Mary. How'd you get in? Uh, your background's actually in this field, television production. Television, yes. How'd you get interested in writing a book? That was a uh, lifetime of being an American and suddenly waking up. I'm home with my children, taking a look at what was happening post 9 11, Bush era, those kinds of things. Not that it's the conservative problem, it's liberal problem too. And realizing that there's a lot of things I know that I'm not seeing reflected. And so I got started doing some research to why are we this way? How can we be fighting this great evil, this great terror, when we're supposed to be free? There's a lot of fear. What's it all about? And that's what I went after. Right. The book is, is termed a religious book, and uh, the title is An American Woman's Search for God, Family, and Country. And you, you deal with all three of those in a rather unique way. Um, you talk about your, Virginia. You talk about your, <laughs> your background and your, and your religious upbringing, but... Um, I guess like a lot of us, you've sort of evolved and uh, your views have maybe modified somewhat since what you were raised in, which is the case for a lot of people these days. Very much so. Um, but one of the interesting things about the book, and this may be part of the editing process, something that really caught my attention, um, being of the baby boomer age, um, you use as chapter titles songs, you know, um, and it's kind of interesting and kind of funny to, to see those and, and the ones you used, and you use a little bit of a little bit of everything in those. Uh, let me see if I can get to that page that just shows me all those. So you did, um, uh, well, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, Mother and Child uh, Reunion, a Paul Simon song. Yeah. Um, you used the Star Spangled Banner. You used Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Um, you used Stairway to Heaven. And you used Bob Marley's One Love for the last one. So you did a variety of, uh, you know, Forever Young. Um, some songs people might recognize, you know, like Pink Houses. Others, maybe not so much. How how'd that idea come about? It came from, um, I'm very into the, where the religious meets the science. And where the physicists have discovered the world is harmonic. We're okay. all instruments in the great orchestra of the universe. Okay, well, what, how did my generation, your generation, break through some of those hypocrisies and change the world that little bit back then? It was the music. It was the music. It was, that's what brought us together. Some people were just there to party, yeah. but the message still yeah. did change yeah. the way we yeah. were doing things. So I grabbed the music to string it through. Interesting. Uh, now, as the editor, when, the, when these wacky ideas come your way, I'm going to use, I'm going to use pop, I'm going to use pop songs, I'm going to use pop songs and some patriotic songs for my time. What was your reaction when you heard that? You think that was a good well, idea? Well, we got connected through friends of a friend of a friend sort of thing, and, and when I first saw the book and, and its title, I thought, well, Oh, hmm. another diary of a mad housewife. But it turned out to be mad in the best sense of the word, mad about the right things, the corruption of our culture and so on. But, uh, but actually using the music is part of Mary's great strength as a writer that I discovered as I was reading her book and working with her. She's remarkable because she, when I first met her and began talking to her, I called her an autodidact, a self-teacher. Right, that she's self-taught, which doesn't mean she doesn't have education. She has a wonderful education and is widely read, as the documentation shows in the book. But she has this power of synthesis that makes her able to unify, connect these arenas of her life, these dimensions of her experience. So music, and being a child of the 60s and 70s, uh, although she's... She's much I younger than I. My way so <laughs> she, we, she really we had, a, we had a moment where she was, are you sure you want to? <laughs> so it, it's really three books you have here. So we can do this. Yeah. We can do this. God, but, family, and country. Those are our steps yeah. to power. Right. So that's who we are as yeah. a nation. Yeah. And we're not who we say we are. We're not who we say we are. We are not. Okay. This book was written really late in the Bush administration. Yeah, I started in on the research in 2004. Mm -hmm. 2004, when I got serious, mm -hmm. where my local librarian said, you want what? <laughs> I was pulling up research on right. the most right. obscure yeah. financial yeah. information. Yeah. And, yeah. and you deal a lot, of, a lot about that in the book, especially later in the book, with the situation in, in the banking industry, the, the so-called too big to fail 
Um, your your take on that? Should anything be in this country be you know is General Motors too big to fail? Is Goldman Sachs too big to fail? They gotta die. <laughs> There's a lot of fear. No, I understand the fear. I do. We have all these 401ks. We have our whole income, especially the retirees, based on this structure. But we also have the the insurance, and you know, let the, the authoritarian big guys go down, but save the little guys. Keep you if you're going to run the printing press to save the system, save the individuals, not the authoritarian. Because who's going to take care? They've been who's saying Wall, Wall Street or Main Street. Right, exactly. And Main Street's the better way to go. And we're, and That's who we're us, supposed to be. Most of us would be Main Street. Few of us are. <laughs> few of us are Wall Street. Yeah. You use a term in the in the book that. I could see could get you into some controversy. Oh, baby, yeah. Um, <laughs> you say in the book, um, basically, we can all raise ourselves to be messiahs. Mm. Um, I can see a lot of uh, Christians, especially, they come at me with hell lately. Might, <laughs> might, might not, might not buy that statement. Yeah, but you know that was one of my aha moments because I spent years and years before all this. My interest was just what are those Catholics talking about? What are these mysteries? Where where did Jesus get his stuff? That you know that was that was just my own personal journey, and it was aha to discover the messianic teachers, the Messiah, that teaching where he comes from, is that we're all supposed to become that level of of existence in order to realize the kingdom of God. We all have to reach that level of awareness, that wholeness of being. And that's been lost. I know the Catholics don't teach that. We're all waiting for Jesus to come back. And that's not the idea. If and when he comes, we're supposed to be at his level, not he'll take us with him. All right. That's, oh. that's interesting. Indeed. Now, you know, you get hit with the job of editing this book, <laughs> which is dealing with religion, mm -hmm. it's dealing with politics, it's dealing with family issues, and you get into a bit of your family background here as well and it deals with economic issues mm -hmm. and you're going like you said it's three maybe even four books mm -hmm. at that level uh, at what point do you start having to be you know miss hardball and saying that's got to come out that's got to come out that's okay that can stay obviously this was bigger when it started than it is yeah. today yeah. how does that work it didn't take me very long to realize that this was a remarkable person and a remarkable book, and that's exactly why it's so remarkable. She is a person who does teach herself more than most people. She doesn't leave a classroom or a book with just a piece of information. She goes the next step and synthesizes the information and pulls and unifies all of these parts of her personal experience, her spiritual life, her analyses of the economy and politics and so on into a vision, a world vision that is so powerful, it all had to be in there. There was no doubt about it. We had to have it all in there. <laughs> and she did a remarkable job of making it a narrative at the same time a prophetic vision. She finished this book a year before the economy collapsed on right. CNN. You know, we right. didn't know it was right. coming. She seemed to. Mm -hmm. But it was because she synthesizes her personal um, being with the rest of her knowledge and created this link she calls honor between self and other and that became obviously the, the key word in her book choosing honor each of us as individuals has to choose honor in order to contribute to the fulfillment of the potential of society as you mentioned you wrote this book late in the uh, Bush administration the uh, Tea Party movement had not become a reality at that point you talk about your political background you've been both a Republican and a Democrat so you've seen both, at least, at least two sides of a multifaceted political system we have in this country. Not like the British quite so much, but we have at least two major parties. Final comment, uh, what's your take on the whole Tea Party movement? The game has been played. It's time to come up with another movement. When it started, I was so excited. I was so excited. I, I adore Ron Paul. I still do. And I liked how Kucinich, even on the left, was bringing in the Constitution, bring us back to the Constitution. And then it just got off and started into taxes, and it got into progressives are the devil, and Obama's a socialist. And I said, whoa, 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 it's supposed to be about freedom, freedom and decentralization, and it's, it's off. So the game has to be re reconfigured. We have to regroup. Next book? The next book is going to talk about education. Okay. Education and how we're not learning what we need to learn. There was a wonderful comment, uh, not comment, quote from Lincoln 
that talks about our national political religion, and that's the reverence for our laws and where our laws are and how we have to teach our children those laws, and that's how we stay free, the education. All right, Mary, thank you so much. Thank you for coming by as well. Good to have you with us in our neighboring community of Seal Beach. Mm -hmm. Great. The book is called Choosing Honor Again. Now, is it still available? Uh, Absolutely. Okay, you so can you can it? find that and uh, find it interesting, and whether it's the religious, the political, or the financial aspect of things you're interested in. You'll see all three in this book.